Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge and to day 25 of the Drawtober Challenge, an illustration challenge where I try and draw every single day throughout the month of October using the on-screen randomly generated prompt words as inspiration for what I should do each day. And today's prompt word is sand. Now if you'd like to draw alongside me you are very very welcome to. You can use the prompts that I've come up with here or your own prompt list or anything like that. We've had some fantastic people over on Instagram who have been drawing alongside me. But if that's not your thing and you just fancied something interesting to watch and listen to while you have your morning cup of coffee, I do not blame you at all. I am nursing a cup of coffee as we speak. So feel free to sit back and relax as I describe what I came up with for the prompt word sand today. So what I really wanted to capture in today's illustration was a sort of underutilized, in my opinion, form of magic. And that is geomancy, the, uh, I guess, art or science or whatever you want to call magic, um, of spell casting in an effort to form and reshape the earth around you, your, sur your surrounding environment, in order to bend it to your will, whether that be offensively or perhaps to like create bridges and things to allow your party to cross or whatever. I think it's a massively powerful skill that hasn't got too much love. Uh, excuse you, Myrtle. Sorry, Myrtle's sitting on my lap, so that's, that's Myrtle just yawning, by the way. Um, but yeah, you threw me right off, Myrtle. Um, but yeah, I, I think an underutilized form of magic, an under... A, appreciated is the wrong word. It doesn't get much love. There's not many spells in 5e at least, not in the based rulebook, in the player's handbook, that sort of capture what you might be able to achieve with geomancy spells. And there's some things like, you know, shape earth. You can reflavor a lot of things. You know, there's... Um, Bones of the Earth, for example, shoots these massive pillars up uh, in a massive area around you. That used to be one of my favorite spells when I played a wizard, because you get to choose specific points on the map where these huge uh, teeth or spires, or whatever you want to call it, rise up from the ground and smash people either into ceilings or, in the edition that I used to play, it used to just be spikes rather than pillars, so they would just deal large amounts of damage. It was akin to a fireball. Unfortunately, in first edition where I actually had access to this spell, you had to roll to hit as a fighter, even though you were, you know, a wizard, in my case, casting this spell. So it often missed, but when it hit, God, that was a lot of damage. Anyway, perhaps because of that, uh, or perhaps because of my absolute adoration for the uh, Avatar The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra uh, TV series, is the idea of geomancy, earthbending, all this kind of stuff, um, really holds a special place in my heart. And on top of that as well, I was quite obsessed when I was younger um, with the Naruto TV series, and there's a character in that who has a power or curse or whatever you want to call it, that I absolutely loved. It was a sort of uh, anti-hero type character. They start off as a villain, you know, typical sort of anime trope, I guess. And again, I'm a huge edgelord, so I was immediately uh, fascinated by this character. They had like the, I guess, ashes of their dead mother um, combined in a, a huge gourd, an urn, um, filled with sand that they always wore on their back. And this character had never been touched, never been, no one could strike this character because they're, these ashes, these, the sand would always sentiently release themselves from this urn or gourd on, on this character's back and always strike out to protect them. And they could also use this as a kind of like geomancy magic to encase people in coffins of sand and, you know, other stuff that you'd do with a, a very, very abrasive material that you can fire like a gun, basically. And sand, uh, to me, seems like the best use of geomancy because you can, you can, you know, bones of the earth, you can shoot a huge pillar of rock and smash someone to a ceiling, right? You could uh, use telekinesis in 5e to lift a massive rock and throw it at someone. That's a huge amount of bludgeoning damage to some extent. If you want to go for the whole gravity control thing being something about geomancy, then, you know, you have a huge amount of your uh, at your disposal there. You could, you know, make a pit hole to swallow up your enemies. You know, the possibilities are are fairly limitless. But with sand, because it's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's tiny amounts of solid matter that if they vibrate enough or if you, you know, have enough command over this kind of stuff, it's just, you know, operates like a liquid. But if you can control it, then you can very quickly turn it into something very tough. You know, sand blasting, you, you know, you could 
tear the flesh from someone's bones with this massively abrasive stuff. Or you could very quickly harden it into something that is, you know, like concrete, essentially. So what I really wanted to do with this illustration was capture someone who has dedicated their life to mastering this. Perhaps a hermit wizard who lives in a desert and is commanding the sand around them uh, using magic that they have spent years or perhaps decades refining. So I have them riding a kind of tidal wave of sand that they're transforming into a solid surface, like a kind of surfboard, I suppose. And they're also, at the same time, turning a huge wave into a massive arm or perhaps a lash, a tentacle of sand, which they are warping easily to strike an opponent. I tried to give them kind of, uh, you know, desert hermit attire here. So they have a, a hood uh, to protect them from the sun. They have a kind of uh, bandana or mask they can quickly pull over their nose and mouth if a sandstorm is starting to, to rise up so that they don't kind of choke on all of this stuff. And otherwise they're fairly bare, like they have bare legs, bare feet, bare hands. Uh, they're wearing a kind of tabard-like um, vest, I suppose, on their front. So their sides are exposed because it's going to be very hot in the desert, I would assume loose-fitting clothes so that they can stay relatively cool. I've given them some interesting sort of eye tattoos and a nose, either a scar or a tattoo. I like putting patterns on people's faces when I uh, draw characters. It's not something you see very much in real life. But that's the benefit of tattoos in a fantasy thing. You can create tattoos to kind of fit a theme rather than, you know, the kind of eclectic tattoo collection that you tend to get in real life. Yeah, I used a variety of techniques to create this character, to create this scene. I used my sea sponge to make a lot of sort of particular effects to make it look a little bit more like sand that's flowing around them. And used a variety of watered down washes to make sure that there was a lot of shading on this sand so we could still tell that it was kind of solid. Used my brush pens as per normal. And also that kind of wet in wet technique to uh, create magical circles and rings to show this person commanding the magic at their disposal. Which I then uh, used as a method to kind of like stand out from this darkness that I created. I used some more uh, white acrylic to both draw the magical circles that this character is casting in order to manipulate all the sand around them and also to pick out various highlights on these washes and waves of sand and things like that. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of Geomancy. I really like the idea of putting it in my campaigns. I plan at some point to write some good Geomancy spells that are compatible with 5e so that you could potentially just be a sorcerer or a wizard who exclusively uses earth magic. I think that'd be really fun. I like the idea of elemental magic and I feel like fire is very overdone. Like, Don't get me wrong, being a pure fire sorcerer or something like that is very, very fun to play. But I feel like, you know, every computer game you ever play, when they want to let you know that you're playing a wizard or something like that, the first thing they give you is fire magic, you know? So I quite want to experiment with uh, coming up with some earth-based spells or some water-based spells as well. Something I'd really like to do. But anyway, I'm wittering on and we all have days to get on with. So I think I'll leave you there. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I certainly did. Had a lot of fun with today's prompt. Took a lot of time with this one. I hope you had fun with it too if you are also drawing the prompt word sand today. Or if you're not embarking on the challenge with me, I hope you just had a fantastic time so far and I hope you have an absolutely great day as well. So I'll look forward to seeing you back here for day 26 and the word hammer, I believe it is. So yeah, have a good day guys. Bye.